Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today's video is just about every PC enthusiast and gamer's dream. We are looking at a pair of Radeon R9 295X2 cards and testing their performance. This is two GPUs per card, four GPUs total. We're talking about massive amounts of performance, massive amounts of power consumption, and massive amounts of dollars that it will cost you to actually own these. At $1,500 a piece, this is a $3,000 graphics configuration, but the specifications that it offers are kind of mind-boggling. We're talking 11,264 stream processors, 16 gigs total memory, four gigs per GPU, 23 teraflops of top theoretical compute performance, uh, 1,000 watts top or rated, TDP for the combined graphics cards, and of course $3,000 for the purchase price. This is not a configuration that I think many people are going to own, or even that many people should own, but it's impressive to see we had our hands on two cards, so we wanted to do some testing. Performance-wise, when you move from one GPU to multi-GPU, there's always the question of how good of uh, efficiency, how much efficiency are you getting out of the additional GPUs? You know, high performance scaling, you know, in the 90s percentage is great. Sometimes you get zero scaling and this is absolutely applied here with a pair of R9 295 X2 cards. Uh, great performers were Battlefield 4, Crisis 3, and Tomb Raider in our testing. And those results, we saw 81% scaling with Battlefield 4, we saw 89% scaling with Crisis 3 and 89% scaling with Tomb Raider. Crisis 3 is impressive because uh, we were actually able to take a 4K gaming situation at very high image quality presets with, I think, 4X MSAA applied and take it from a not playable or not playable frame rate to a playable frame rate, almost 60 frames per second. It's kind of mind-boggling to think that Crisis 3 at 4K at those image quality settings requires this to become playable, uh, but obviously, you know, other people could play at 4K if you lower those image quality settings. So those three games saw great scaling, I think, considering we're talking about four GPUs, and the more GPUs you add into a system, the more complicated the multi-GPU configuration gets. And there were a couple of games that performed okay. Grid 2 saw 25% scaling. Um, that's okay, but not obviously something that you would really feel like buying an extra $1,500 video card for. Skyrim actually saw 56% scaling in average frame rate, uh, but it's very dependent on where you are in the game. For example, when we were walking through a the giant open area out uh, outside in Skyrim, we saw actually pretty high performance increases, uh, maybe unnecessarily high, but when we were actually walking towards uh, a castle in an indoor area or with a, a lot of detail, that scaling actually pretty much dropped to zero. So it varied depending on the Skyrim location, and it might in a lot of these games as well. There were a couple of games we tested that were poor performers with the second R9 295X2. Bioshock was faster in average frame rate, but significantly more stuttery. Uh, in my opinion, un <clears throat> unplayable in its in its in, in how much stutter we actually saw when playing the game, uh, and Metro Last Light didn't actually see any scaling at all. It was smooth still, uh, but we saw zero to two percent scaling when adding in the second card. So, uh, as is always the case when you go multi GPU, your mileage is going to vary depending on the game and uh, what what kind of settings you're using. Uh, but when you go from two to four GPUs, it's even more complicated than that. So it makes sense that there is gonna be kind of a variance on from game to game there. Our power consumption numbers, we saw 137 watts at idle, not too bad. The secondary uh, graphics card actually shuts off completely. Um, at under load, 1,261 watts was the peak we saw uh, during Crisis 3. That's a lot of power. And in fact, we had a Corsair AX1200i power supply, not able to really keep up with that. We actually had to hook up a secondary power supply to the second card using the uh, you know pay-per-click pin trick on the ATX connector to get it to power on. That's obviously not what an end consumer would want to do. You'd get a 1500 watt power supply. Corsair has one coming out, an AX1500i, that will provide more than enough power for these GPUs, uh, and in our case, a high-end Sandy Bridge E test platform. Now, uh, all that being said, this is a $3,000 configuration. I don't recommend this for pretty much anybody, and if you do have this, you better be gaming at 4K, because at 25 by 14 or 25 by 16, a single one of these cards is going to you know, blow you away in terms of the performance it offers. Adding in a second one is just for people that have a whole lot of money 
and uh, have no problem spending it for top of the line PC gaming experiences. But even like I said, you're looking at something like Bioshock where you'd actually want to disable Crossfire uh, on, the second, on the second card so that you could actually get a better, smoother gaming experience. Uh, this was an impressive experiment. I'm sure they will sell a handful of systems that are utilizing two of these mammoth beasts of uh, performance powerhouse cards. If you want to do that, feel free. Uh, and, and if you feel like taking advantage of 11,264 stream processors for 3,000 bucks, you could do it. Go, make sure you go to uh, PCPro.com. We have our full written review there. It'll have all the benchmarks laid out for all the games that we tested uh, so you can see which instances were best and which were not. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you soon.